Good evening. I'm honored to be here tonight with all of you in celebration of these extraordinary artists and the films we've gotten to celebrate this year, as well as the amazing television. And now, particularly, guess why? Um, I get to be part of paying tribute to a few of our most profound living and past legends, as we have been this evening, with the global icon and creator tributes. But personally, I wanted to share something. I had two heroes in my childhood, movies and Barbie. They were both my greatest companions, my lens outward, my therapy, my portal to cracking my imagination open wide. I was beyond grateful for them and deeply curious about, well, all that they made me feel and discover. Um, when the amazing Margot Robbie, Tom Ackerley, and their partners at Lucky Chap first acquired the rights to Mattel's iconic Barbie, they knew there were only two brilliant brains that could capture this story through words so perfectly, dream up an entire universe built by the inspiration of one doll. And if Ryan were here, I would probably say, or two. And give it the delicious, subversive, radical magic that it holds. Those genius brains are Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. I have not only had the honor of working with them both, I call them my family. In knowing their work, we've seen how there is always a sense of rhythm, even dance, all its own while also in their stories, of course, of course, holding an honest, often hilarious, deep, true rawness. For Barbie, they used all their gifts to blow our minds open and explore, expose, and even find fun in stereotypes, cultural stigmas, misogyny, and what it means to be a girl who dreams big and chooses to live outside the box. And the result, creating a world where there's room for everyone. One of my favorite memories was FaceTiming with Noah and Greta one night, and they just finished working, they'd finished a scene, and they could not stop laughing. And I said, oh my God, you guys, tell me, tell me what's going on. And Greta said, oh no, I can't believe we will ever get away with making this. Then Greta, with her genius leadership, and vision creates insane magic. As she shows us, to live in Barbie land is to be a perfect being in a perfect place unless you have a full-on existential crisis or you're a Ken. She combines that with a passion for movies that runs the gamut from Busby Berkeley musicals to The Wizard of Oz to 2001 A Space Odyssey to influences like Buster Keaton Gene Kelly, and of course, every shade of pink. Greta and her incomparable partners and collaborators, including Warner Brothers, her aforementioned amazing producers, including also David Heyman, her DP, Rodrigo Prieto, her production designer, Sarah Greenwood, costume designer, Jacqueline Durand, extraordinary makeup and hair, soundtrack gurus, Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt, and music supervisor, George Trikulius, all together gave us the gift and experience of Barbie. As did, of course, the most infectious, bold, playful, radical, fearless team of cast members I've ever seen in anything who shattered our preconceived ideas of these characters to reinvent and show us all that Barbies and Kens and everyone can be. A huge thank you to that entire cast, highlighting America Ferreira, who gifts us with an indelible anthem in this movie we will never forget. And of course, to our dream duo, two actors who are beyond perfect, and show us our shadow selves. 
They utilize archetypes to transcend them in their discovery of what it means to be human. This magnificent, bold, and luminescent duo, Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, amazing Margot Robbie, an incredible actor and filmmaker, a true filmmaker, give us iconic performances. It is now my privilege to present the global icon and creator tribute to Barbie and to accept our goddesses, heroic Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie. Beautiful speech. Greta has been crying. I, it's true, I have been crying. Greta wrote this speech in advance, uh, both our parts, and she knew she'd be crying because she's always crying when Laura speaks. Uh, she also can't believe that you guys are friends. Who text? Yes, on some level I'm surprised every time you text me back. And I'm also surprised when you text me back. We are here because of course, I would text you. <laughs> We're here because four years ago, I asked Greta to come write Barbie for me and Tom Ackley and Lucky Chap. And then I said Noah would do it with me. Which he didn't totally know. Yes, but he found out when he saw a Variety article with the headline that Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach are set to write the Barbie movie. And then he texted it to me with just a question mark. And Greta apologized profusely, which is what she does every time she gets Noah into a situation he isn't sure he wants to be in, which is often. And then, and then he wrote back, it's okay, we'll make each other laugh. Which is exactly what they did. <laughs> Greta and Noah wrote Barbie in the midst of global lockdown when no one was going to films or making films and they took an object a doll with no character or story and cooked up the most ridiculous, outrageous, bananas script in an attempt to conjure back what they love most, the movies. We figured that if no one was making movies anyway, they might as well not make this movie. <laughs> and when Tom and I first read the script, we had a full-on panic attack. To be clear, I've written this uh, speech, so I, I'm not sure if Margot actually had a panic attack. No, 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 I, I did, we did. I had a minor panic attack um, because we thought they're never gonna let us make this and we should probably show it to no one. And then we made them show it to everyone. And then Warner Brothers miraculously said yes and Mattel miraculously said yes, essentially. Mostly, with, with some notes, <laughs> which Greta and Noah ignored. We carefully considered the notes, and then we presented our case. You, you ignored them. We had written the part for Margot, which is, makes sense. She's a stone-cold genius. You can write anything for her. And then we also wrote the part for Ryan Gosling, who is another stone-cold genius who they didn't know, actually none of us knew him. And then Margot and I started our months long campaign to make him Ken and also make him our friend who texts with us. America Ferreira was the only person who could play this part of Gloria, so we went about trying to convince her as well. Essentially because this all was so unlikely, we were putting together a fantasy baseball team of a movie from the cast to the creative team, because it all felt like pretend anyway. Cinematographer Rodrigo Prieto. Costume designer Jacqueline Duran. Production designer Sarah Greenwood. Composers and music producers Mark Ronson and Andrew Wyatt. Alan, I mean, Michael Sarah, And Will Ferrell, I mean, Will Ferrell. 
<laughs> we had meetings about the color pink, which lasted days. I learned how to be a human and accept death. She's accepted death, you guys. Um, we had an absolute, the absolute best time from beginning to end making this film, which every day felt like the most euphoric collective expression of creativity I've ever been part of. The cast disco danced and rode invisible horses and screamed at flat feet and sang their hearts out. Margot can't sing, though, which is the most charming part about her. <laughs> this is Greta's personal perversion. Is... We cannot believe we got to make this film. And having audiences around the world wear pink and show up to the movie theater has literally been a dream come true. It has been incredibly moving to see how the joy we felt making this has been experienced by audiences watching it. And we are deeply honored to be given this award. So thank you, Jeffrey Sharp and Gotham. We love a restaurant in a bank. And Ryan texts us back now. Huzzah! Yes! <laughs>